So guys, uh, in front of us, there is three letters written, bar, uh, B-A-R. Let's raise the bar because the first session has set the bar quite high in terms of the knowledge that we all gathered. So let me get started with the first round. Uh, I'm going to be focusing largely about your organization to begin with, right? In Brick to Byte, the idea is to cover the digital transformation narrative that's taking shape across the real estate landscape. So my question largely is about Today, with the help of Generative AI, we are seeing the first implementation in terms of the content, right? Uh, almost getting automated. The new age CRM tools are automating our workflows. Uh, the customer data platforms in form of CDPs are giving you a visibility around every data of your customer touch points on one unified dashboard. When I'm talking about this landscape around the sales, marketing, and operations, I wanted to understand where are your organizations sitting currently? And what are the areas where you really want to push the bar, right? So Vishal, I'm going to start with you on this one. Sorry. Hello, hello. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Reality Plus. First, first of all, to, you know, to uh, invite us for this uh, amazing conference. Uh, I'll I'll take uh, uh, your question is like, as a group, Kanakya group, we are we still not there, you know, as far as generative AI or, or or any other digital platform. We are still starting. Uh, we are still not implementing it fully the way it should be. You know, uh, past couple of years, we we have always dealt with uh, mandated companies from a sales and marketing perspective. We, we have stopped using our own sales and marketing team. We have just uh, using uh, uh, people like NROC or uh, any other mandated companies. So what, what's happening is everything is happening in piecemeal. Uh, whatever their inputs comes, we kind of try and incorporate and then you know uh, take the, the digital uh, piece ahead uh, from their marketing inputs, from their sales inputs. So, but we are learning and we are uh, kind of uh, seeing that transformation now happening. Uh, we have tied up, as I said, we have tied up with uh, Anarok, not just not for the sales and marketing mandate, but we also tied up with their digital platform also. So, uh, we, we are kind of learning that curve at present and uh, slowly we'll uh, kind of improve. Lovely. What about you, Nidhi? Uh, so, this is a very interesting question. I think... Uh, uh, the way AI and CRM is just changing lives is absolutely fantastic. Uh, AI and CRM has become like the way of life. At this moment, I think it's impacting internally and externally, both. If I say internally, internally is all about how your sales force is dealing with it. So all the segregated datas which we had, so-called the larger datas, which larger spends, we're kind of able to make a very meaningful sense out of that data. It's just about intelligent uh, work which is going around, which in turn is saving a lot of time of the manpower. It is kind of giving a more productive results. Uh, it is, uh, you know, we're able to make out more meaningful sense out of the entire thing. Externally, if I say, I think it's even better because we are able to cater the right customer, uh, right target group, and of course, saving a lot of time of the customer also to approach with the right kind of product. So I think for us at Vibe, it is extremely important that we kind of go forward and we're already doing that and we're kind of implementing a lot of, lot of strategy. Uh, you've been always a great friend and we've kind of spoken a lot of time, I think, uh, on this. Wherever we are not able to integrate, I think we integrate with you know, firms and they kind of collaborate and give us that expertise. So I think, yes, internally and externally, it is helping us to build to the next level organization. And that is exactly what is required right now. Super. I'm going to go in detail about it, but meet your, your, your next. So I think uh, the panel here, along with you, I think uh, all of us here will agree that it is not, the question is whether it's, it's not about whether it's important or no, it's a mandate. We have to, uh, uh, you know, Obra Realty as a company uh, is a company, though it's a four decade old company, it's a new age company in that sense. The way we build, the way we plan is uh, something which thinks future first. 
uh, and that is also reflective on what we do from uh, uh, an overall MarTech implementation standpoint. So uh, questions on whether, uh, you know, how, how would you want to use generative AI? We did that when we recently launched our, uh, our project in Thane Forestville. Uh, 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 we used generative AI and people appreciated it. It is, it is a very customer focused or an interest buyer focused approach. Uh, CRM, uh, yes, I think uh, we've, uh, CRM is something which is a hygiene, uh, but utilizing CRM, like uh, uh, she was saying, you know, utilizing CRM to the to its best, where it's closed looping customer communication, where it's closed looping uh, data insights, and you are doing meaningful uh, 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 conversations with the customer, uh, is uh, something where the overall real estate as an industry is moving to. I saw the one that you guys leveraged for generative AI, the, the campaign, the communication. That yep. was really beautiful. I got to admit that. And uh, Ankit, I have a different question for you. Uh, since you represent a different uh, starter altogether, right? You represent starter, but it's a different category altogether. Uh, my question to you is, since you guys are dealing into the investments, uh, right? Led decision making uh, when it comes to real estate investments. I wanted to know from you currently what part and how much part of the journey is fully digitized. Let's say you get 100 customers. You say 60 to 70% are purely digital, they're never using any physical interfaces and uh, uh, the rest is physical. So could you just tell us a little bit about this particular journey, how you're taking them and what's the split between the manual intervention uh, with regards to the other side, which is the purely digitized experiences. Uh, so thank you guys for having me here. So one of the most interesting piece that you're talking about is the fact that when we started this, right, um, we always say that we are a tech first company. Right, and me coming from a technology background, working with startups at the early stages as well. So it was very critical that how do we, uh, how do we make this work, right? And it's as I said, it's an investment-led thing. Uh, the whole idea was to get people across. There should be no barriers in terms of investors coming in. It should not be a zone or a area specific. It had to be across the globe. So uh, we started it that way. Uh, Touchwood. COVID happened, people had enough time, people had time to adapt to new things because it was a huge lifestyle change for everyone for almost one, one and a half year people were at home. Uh, today, I can very proudly say that 100% of my investment till date yeah. have been digital. Okay. Right? Uh, we've been able to, uh, you know, pull it off in a way where in the last four years that I've been with Strata Strata's existence, yeah. there's been only one site visit that has happened. Right. So till date, it has all been digital. Yeah, there is still a human interface needed because it's and it's a decision of investment. It's money that is matters. Right. So you still need people to talk to you to, uh, you know, the, you still need people to comfort you for your investments. But uh, beyond that, we, we, we are more than happy to see that we have seen this trend where people don't come and ask that, OK, this is the property that you are launching. Can I go and visit? OK, if he's passing by that area, he'll be like, OK, I'm passing this place. Can I just have a look? and we manage it for them but there has not been a request or there has not been a uh, you know a forum where people come up and say that you know i want to visit the property before investing so that's the kind of trend change that we've seen uh, thanks to the technology thanks to uh, you know everything being so transparent and that is that is why uh, we stick around as a company as well that's our motto that we try and be as transparent as possible to our investors so that they start trusting us and all the transactions till date have been digital Super weird. So uh, we got to understand one thing uh, a few years back when I came to Bombay, I believe everybody said uh, that physical, physical, physical is the only way. Now I saw that the branded land is a category is pulling out and saying that, hey, we can be totally digital. And the whole investment uh, led fractional buying experiences are digital too. So these are the two sectors where, you know, we can really say and claim that the whole digitized experiences are the final you know, uh, stakeholders, and we can rely upon the digital experiences in totality. Now, my second question is where I am very curious to know your viewpoints. And I'm pretty sure the audience that we have is something that, you know, we all discuss day to day, but we do not have a solution. If I say between 2005 to 2015, it was a 99 acres or a magic bricks, they were the places, they were the places where customers were going through. And as a stakeholders onto the B2B side, we found solutions with their solutions. But after that, Meta and Google became the mainstay for our lead generation, reaching out to the customers. What do you believe is the future going to be? And what are the ecosystems that you believe are evolving or should evolve 
where you would want to invest, where you would want to engage and see the customer journeys in a different format altogether, or where you believe that you know the customer inquisitiveness can be tapped. What are those opportunities that you guys are believing that are going to be shaping the future? Meet, I'll start with you on this one. Uh, it's a great question. And I think uh, you've bifurcated the trends very well. Uh, between 2005 to 2015 was the era where uh, you know uh, the uh, overall uh, property aggregators came into play. I think they are still relevant. It's not like they are not. Uh, but uh, the way they are, they are getting to service uh, real estate companies as well as clients has altered a little. The next 10 years, because of easy access of digital technologies and digital marketing, uh, is where uh, performance marketing took a forefront where uh, companies uh, started generating leads themselves and started focusing on acquiring direct customers uh, uh, themselves versus uh, reliant, uh, being a little more reliant on say brokers uh, or channel partners. Uh, I think now uh, with uh, COVID uh, in our hindsight, with people uh, having explored uh, uh, digital marketing from a performance point of view a lot, uh, companies are realizing the impact of digital brand building. So, uh, uh, because you know that helps you in the long run. You, you look at any company uh, which has uh, uh, survived over 100 years, uh, all the companies have a very strong brand marketing in place. And what they've essentially done is they've moved that entire brand storytelling on the digital platforms. Be it utilizing social media to its advantage, be it creating conversational uh, uh, touch points uh, on their uh, assets, be it a conversational bot on the website, uh, be it a customer portal that can address their problems very well, or uh, be it the communications that go to them via emails, SMS, WhatsApp. Uh, it's, it's about how uh, people are perceiving your brand and how your brand is in the top recall uh, when a customer is considering, uh, considering your product set. Solid. So uh, the number one answer that you're saying is the brand uh, focus from each and every uh, stakeholder uh, where you are building your own community in a sense, right? Yep. I have a separate question on this one, but for now I'm picking up the brand as a one answer. I'm moving to you, Nidhi. What's the second there? Okay. So my question, my answer to this question uh, uh, is that, you know, when you ask that what is going to be the future, I would say the future is going to be, I mean, it's going to be the same. It's going to be Meta and Google. Okay. But it's just that we are into different phases. Okay. It's just that probably I see from that angle that at this moment we are at phase two or three maybe, and we have to reach at phase eight and nine. Okay. Since you are an expert in your field itself, uh, let me tell you that what are the two problems which we face today in in the space, in the, in the technology space, when, when to do with leads or sales or however, uh, you know, the entire overall uh, ecosystem is happening, is that is Google and Meta working for us? The answer is yes. Uh, are the people getting some kind of a relevant sale from it? The answer is yes. But have we optimized it? The answer is no. Sure. Uh, there are there are cases today also where we are spending huge on terms of in terms of the cost but the productivity which we are getting out of it is less uh, uh, the the second point is that it's not only about the cost it is also about the man hours getting spent sure. on nurturing that kind of a lead to bring to the final i would say conclusion or result so what i see from here is if you ask me what is going to be the future now these are different angles it's like meta and facebooks are going to be there uh, we are is the second phase of it, which is once you have catered to a customer, how do you kind of further enhance that customer to the next level? Sure. But if you ask me today, I think we are at that particular point of time that we have just entered into this domain. And this domain is really vast. We have still to get into that system where the FIFO system, which is like typically if you see how do you generate these technologies of Facebook and how do you kind of come out to that customer base is only by putting those relevant profiles. But we forget the fact that the guy who is putting in those profiles is also a guy who probably is a one year, two year, three year experience guy who is profiling these customers and hence it is a FIFO. What you put in comes out. So I think what the next phase or the next generation which I see is the AI should be equipped of getting the logic of the business so appropriately that there is no FIFO, there is no person sitting on the system feeding 
the profiling it is the system itself depicting from the nature of business as to what the relevant answer would be so i would say i see facebook meta as as a very very long term activity however there'll be an advancement in the same and i think that's that's exactly what we all want subab so uh, nidhi you went in detail and to summarize the first one as came as a brand building the second one i believe that you said uh, with the help of meta and google and the generative ai capacities that are going to be engaging uh, that is where somewhere the opportunities are going to lie and to just answer one thing and to the guys here uh, the two three companies that we engaged with and uh, you know uh, we really saw the whole call center experiences uh, getting replaced with the help of nlp where the moment the leads are getting generated the calls will go within 1 minute or 2 minute and that will be a bot calling in your voices right so we believe uh, for under sub 1 crore bracket that would be a great uh, you know efficient medium to continue with Absolutely. so thanks to tan nidhi on this one i just wanted to add one layer yeah. which i'll what about you uh, i agree on both our panelists that uh, yeah brand absolutely very important and uh, yeah meta and google will definitely be uh, my my thought on this is that acceptance first you know like uh, how how our sector is really accepting uh, gen ai or or all, all water or whatever we are speaking here is so we need to really implement things uh, faster we need to uh, uh, i mean we need to start doing things uh, in a in a very digital manner uh, training is very important uh, we we as a marketers or we as a leaders probably say ki ha we we need to adopt this technology this but what what's happening below uh, at the downside also we need to really check whether that that those training has been also parted with uh, with our teams uh, our promoters are in sync with uh, the overall uh, thoughts which we have as a marketers or market leaders so that's that's what now it is coming up in our sector especially in real estate sector wherein the promoters are now becoming aware accepting the the ideas of digital transformation digital shift and uh, going forward this is what i see that uh, we, it will keep improving sure okay and ankit what about you so i think all the can you guys hear me yeah so i think all the points that the panel has put across are valid right but uh, uh, the way i look at it what is what is in the future or you know what is it that is going to uh, take us along is the adaptability the investors are becoming smarter right the people are becoming smarter it's a connected world right probably 5 years 10 years down the line there was we always say in marketing there was a before geo and an after geo era as well right so uh, there was a time when you used to rush, run your search ads and you will get crazy clicks today people know that the first three things are ads they go down and you know they look for what is the relevant uh, result out of a google ad or a google search for that matter right so uh, you know adapting the technology integrating it into into your business right because it's a mix of everything it cannot just be that i am doing really great on digital marketing or i am you know just using the ai it is also delivering what i have promised because that's one big a uh, question mark that comes in when it comes to real estate right a lot of people go through these things in their head uh, before making the final decisions right so adaptability service so it's it has to be a mix of everything it just cannot be one factor which is going to run it uh, but yeah taking the technology to another level uh, you know integrating it into a day to day system uh, making sure that things are on the click on the go like how the other, other industries have adapted right uh that's going to play a very critical role because uh people today have enough money have enough money to invest the only thing that they are short of is time Absolutely. right so if i am able to give them an experience which is on a click of a button which is on their mobile phone where they can go experience see understand learn everything about it it just makes the decision making faster right. right and that's where it is so yeah brand plays an important role google meta will stay there uh you know the you got to solve execution. for the adaptability as exactly. well exactly absolutely yeah so that no, i think that's the biggest thing that is needed uh in the time so uh, uh mr vishal and ankit both talked about solving for the adaptability as an issue i believe every proptech founder here has to look at that as well it's not about making the best product we have to really see who are the people who are going to use those technology the previous panel also emphasized on the same part now i'm going to talk about something which came out of the last conversation uh two of you uh, meet uh, to a certain extent even nidhi you and kit you leveraged 
the brand as a very important keyword, right? I wanted to know how can technology, the whole digital transformation narrative, can be leveraged to create an exceptional brand. brand. So we've always talked about just the communication, so we can cover that as well. But how it can leverage technology to create an exceptional brand, which can yield to maybe creating communities. What are the new forms that we can experience in the coming days? Uh, if you could just shed some uh, you know, light on the same. Ankit, I'll start with you. Uh, so as you rightly mentioned, right? So for us, uh, like for Strata, it's a little different because we deal with investors and not the end users, right? And uh, with the kind of ticket size where we have and the portfolio of people that we have, these are practically the top 1% of the country, right? Using them as a strength, creating a community out of them, you know, uh, creating a networking out of it, it's, it's going to be very critical for us. Tell us one thing that you oh, guys at Strata do to build that community, which nobody else would, could, is doing. Maybe we can learn from it. So uh, there is a platform called, uh, there's, a, there's a, a product within our, our product, which is called as a Strata Circle. Okay. which is a platform where, you know, all the investors are there on the similar portal. They are, the, only the investors are supposed to have a conversation over there. So, you know, it's real estate. You get stuck with something or the other at times. There might be some, uh, you know, issues related to some basic stuff related to, can be a, can be a zone driven or can be any <coughs> market driven thing. And that is the time when we try and leverage this community. You might have somebody who has a huge network in a specific market who can help you solve this faster. Sure. Right. So, Leveraging that community, making sure they are active about it, driving the conversations around it, right? There will always be scenarios where people will come and also try and complain. You know, and it's their right, it's the money that they've invested, right? But how are you able to, uh, <coughs> uh, how are you able to respond to them? How are you able to solve those issues for them? And, uh, you know, how you are taking those things to another level by leveraging their network to solve your issues. Like, in a very simple way, we, uh, you know, we you have a flex, uh, 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 panel later in the day. Sure. We launched one of our asset classes which had an end tenant as a flex guy. Okay. Right. But so what we did is before we were not 100% sure about the tenant. We reached to our community and figured out that there were certain people who were either working for the tenant company or have been somewhere associated with them. And we got those feedbacks which gave us that confidence yes. that you know this while we are launching a property with this tenant it is going to work for us because the tenant is absolutely fine. So it can work in multiple ways, not only solving issues, but it also identifying the right properties for our investors, identifying the right markets, how it has worked for them and stuff like that. So, you know, building that community out of people, it's the most important thing, which we feel is going to be the, uh, you know, beacon holder pr probably going forward as a brand, because once a person experiences it, he's going to be the one who's going to go and talk about it. Fabulous. Uh, that was quite insightful. Meet, I'll come to you next. So, uh, addressing the point on uh, building brands digitally. Uh, let's take a completely different example, uh, not real estate. Okay. Say Cadbury. <coughs> right. So, Cad what is Cadbury? They sell chocolates. Chocolate, yeah. It's as simple as that, they sell chocolates. But uh, over the past few years, they have been able to build their brand on what Cadbury emotes digitally. Sure. Everyone remembers the Shah ad. Everyone remembers the hyperlocal ads they, and they have been leveraging digital technologies and they have in fact used generative AI before generative AI was termed term, that. Yeah. Right. So uh, why not do it for real estate? Uh, there are, uh, I mean, uh, as much as we'd like to believe that uh, people have gone completely digital, I think there is there are certain aspects that are even moving back to physical. Yeah. Say for example, a, a conference like this. Uh, during the COVID days and post COVID, all the conferences, all the talks were happening digitally. Yeah. Now people are feeling the need to you know, we have to move back to us being, you know, human, humans are social animals and we love to interact. Now that platform to interact can be a digital platform, can be a physical uh, platform. Uh, but the storytelling of it can happen digitally. Absolutely. Right. So, uh, uh, when you say that, uh, you want to build brands digitally. There are ample of opportunities. There are obviously Facebooks and Googles of the world, but uh, uh, you know they are moving to a very walled garden approach. Uh, with the cookie-less environment, uh, what will happen essentially is the exchange of data that was freely flowing across the platforms will sort of stop, which essentially means that they will want us to spend more on their platform. Yeah. You have to optimize that with 
uh, conversion APIs. You have to optimize conversions that happen from those individual platforms. But you have to do your own independent storytelling and you have to leverage your own uh, database and uh, uh, channels that you, uh, that you have to do this uh, storytelling. Super. Uh, I mean, a very simple thing can be, uh, I'm not sure how many companies, real estate companies, really send to their existing customers or prospects just a simple newsletter on an email saying that, hey, this is what has transpired in the last quarter. This is how the company has done. And this is what we are planning to do in the future and align them to what the company's goals are. If they feel that connect, they will obviously want to invest, be it an investor yeah. or be it a, a person who wants to buy real estate. If, <coughs> if you feel that you are connecting with that brand, you will end up purchasing the product. Superb, yeah. And uh, the most important part that, you know, we can customize it. Like, you know, Obviously. your Thane resident gets a Thane uh, based newsletter first approach and then the brand. And the same, a Gorega or Boriwali gets theirs. Yes. So, super uh, meet. And the hyper local delivery wala job ne bola na on the content, Sharu Kala. If Obra Reality is trying to do, we will be keen to participate and <laughs> associate as well. Ye mera khud ka plugin tha. Now move forward. <laughs> uh, Nidhi. So, uh, what's, your, what's your side of the narrative on the same? No, I'll keep it very simple. I think uh, he said it, uh, both of them said it very relevantly. I think uh, brand for us is trust, right? Uh, we are in advisory. Uh, while, in fact, uh, while I was, uh, you know, associated with Godrej Properties and then Kolte Padil Developers when I was leading teams, honestly speaking, I think the main focus was brand in every aspect. I think be it be a product launch, be it be employee engagement, be it be how we cater. Uh, when I'm an entrepreneur now and uh, the advisory firm which we deal with, I think it's all about the developers, it's all about the employees and it's all about, you know, company as a whole. I think for us, what is critical is that we kind of bringing out that story yeah. of a developer. We're bringing out that story of our own firm with the kind of spirit which we work with that die instant which we have for a developer that, okay, this is like our product. Now, how does it get catered is, I think, AI or probably I would say digitally, that's the medium by which it gets catered. So I think you'll appreciate with the fact that whenever we launch a product, we never speak about, you know, we directly have to go to a product. We speak about the brand story. We speak about what particularly the brands can do for customers. The customers have the buying capacity. It's just that they want to kind of associate with the right people. So to, to keep it very simply, I think digital is the only means by which people know the story. And I think brand is all about the story is equal to trust. Sure. Nidhi, would you also want to add a little bit, uh, see with regards to the real estate now, at least current time in India, we're seeing a lot of global, uh, you know, investors coming in and investing into the real estate growth story of India. So uh, you and Ankit both, if you want to touch base a little more, because from the investor point of view, what's a global... Uh, set of people who are investing, maybe they are Indians, and you have a base in Dubai as well. Uh, if you could give some uh, highlight onto the part where the brand building is being leveraged to attract the global audiences and eyeballs as well. Oh yes, I think uh, very relevantly said that when it comes to uh, global investments, I think it's both the ways. It's about NRIs investing in India and Indians investing in the foreign markets and I deal with both the spaces. So yes, it, it, it is extremely important because what happens is that when we, okay, to, to talk very clearly, when you are sitting in a place like Dubai or probably a Singapore or Malaysia, I think they are not there physically to see what kind of property it is. It's only the brand. I think the first thing which we speak about is what the brand is doing. It's, it's about probably, uh, you know, the store, the brand story behind. And typical example where, you know, there's just one company which is present. I mean, of course, there'll be many which must be aspiring. But there's one brand which is there in both the spaces. NRI to Indian and Indian to NRI. That's Shobha. I think that example, I can't leave that example because I think they are one of the guys who have kind of created that kind of a brand story with them. Whether Indian investor would want to kind of uh, purchase abroad, and whether the NRI. So I think this is like a larger space where brand really matters. Uh, all the foreign real estate companies are doing it fantastically. They're getting co-associated with certain other brands like D. Gresigona or for that matter, Kavali and you know, of the world. 
So that's how their strategy is that they don't only say about their own story, they also have co-associations with some of the brand who also have the stories. So it's a beautiful way. Of course, the Indian companies are doing extremely well in having their own uh, stories abroad and it's a beautiful journey which NRIs have seen in the past also and year to come also. Great. Uh, Ankit, you want to put in any, uh, the number that I wanted to know, the, what is the global participation currently with Strata currently? Uh, so, uh, we have around what, 20% of our investor base who are NRIs. Okay. So, in our product, it cannot be the other way around where the Indians are going outside and yes, investing. Yes, of course. But we, we do have a lot of NRIs who invest money through us, right? Uh, one of the most important piece to it is exactly as we mentioned, that brand is all about trust. Sure. Right. So, it is, uh, it is the fact that uh, they they read about you, they talk about you, they hear about you, they start trusting you and hence they end up becoming an investor. But uh, I think along with that, empowering those investors, uh, making them self-sufficient is also very important, right? Sure. And that is what we try to do at, at certain levels because I can say almost 90% of your NRI investors are either dependent on your local broker or a family member to even understand what is happening with their investment or what is happening in and around the property, sure. right? Uh, but with technology, uh, with platforms, uh, you know, and with the integrations that we have, uh, we end up giving them a valuation report of the property every six months. We end up giving them a sale and lease transactions that have happened in and around the properties in the last few years, in a, in a, you know, in a six months to one year frequency. So that practically has, has empowered the NRI investor to take their decisions on their own. Sure. Right. It, it gives them that it's a very big gray area that they are dependent on a lot of local aspects to understand that. And that adds on to the value. Right, because today, as I mentioned earlier as well, it's it's an on-the-go world, yeah. right? So if you are able to give them that kind of uh, that kind of a product, that kind of a uh, uh, you know a service, it just adds on to the value. But yeah, we've seen some crazy uh, investors who have been uh, consistently investing in India market because they also feel that this is the next uh, go-to market for investment. So yeah. So Vishal, bhai, I'm going to ask you uh, your communication specifically. I've been observing is getting sharper and sharper, right? Kanaki as a group. So I just saw I was coming down from the flight and I saw choose or lose. And then in between you had a zero as just a campaign. Uh, I wanted to know that, you know, uh, this whole branding part, how, how much it is rubbing off to Kanakia currently in terms of the sales and with regards to digital shift technology, what part is being leveraged there? Uh, so we, we actually need to understand the brand DNA of the company, you know, basically. So if you take, like, there are, there are developers who are selling luxury, there are developers who are mastering affordability. Uh, if you take example of Kanakya Spaces, we have, we have pioneered in theme residency. <coughs> if you, all of our projects are theme-based projects. If you, if you see Kanakya Paris or Kanakya Miami, depending on the location and depending on what product mix we are doing, we usually connect it with the theme. Kanakya Silicon Valley is our latest offering, you know. Uh, so, uh, and then leveraging just not residential sector, we also have various other sectors like we are all also into education we are also into hospitality with courtyard merit as a brand uh, cinema business you know cinema business minimax a movie max is our new venture okay so what we've done is that we try to leverage all the four brands different brands of the aspect and cross sell or cross generate you leverage that particular uh, aspect of that business is also into real estate so and then use of generative ai wherein we understand the pattern of people who are just not buying uh, residential or commercial properties, but also spending money uh, on a hotel, uh, uh, on a, a vacation, then spending money on a movie experience, spending money on education. And, and that's how we have started leveraging. So our brand, Kanakya brand has all these four sectors and we kind of uh, leverage on each brand to promote the other brand. Superb. And I believe uh, with regards to the new uh, technologies which are taking shape, all these ecosystems like the movie going audience, how they can be tapped into to Absolutely. sell the real estate uh, residential pieces, this great technology evolution that's happening. I'll talk to you uh, backstage about sure. it. Yeah. And uh, now coming to the next important question that I had for you, uh, Meet, would you just take a little bit of a while and talk about, because you covered it, the conversion API and uh, the Google, uh, Google Chrome uh, cookie depreciation, if you could just give a little bit of insight so that we can do a little bit of a conversation around it. Sure. So exactly uh, what is happening is uh, Google and Facebook overall, I mean, with, uh, with uh, Google driving a lot of this uh, is that uh, 
they want the data of their ads and the customers to not be usable by other platforms. That is sort of the crux of it. So guys, please do listen to this for any guy who are trying to leverage digital and technology. This is a very important transformation that has just happened in Jam. Please be aware about it. Yeah, go on. Uh, yeah, which means that the the entire aspect of what a cookie is. What is a cookie? Cookie is an information about about you as a browser. So it with it it's it can be a personal data or it can be a non personal data as well. But it it has attributes about what you are and hence helps you uh, helps uh, the advertising platforms target you better. That uh, uh, you know whatever are the targeting criteria that are available in each of these platforms. They are able to optimize to reach you better, which means that there is that aspect of personalization. There is that aspect of custom ads that you see. Uh, what strategically Google, uh, any of these platforms are doing is they are doing away with the fact for a very simple reason that they were using these insights and these insights were used by some other platform. Hence, the revenue was shifting to some other platform. Yeah. Right. Uh, now, what will happen is the role of your first party data becomes very much important. So how you have over the uh, past few years collected your first party data and uh, you have to nurture that data even better on each of these platforms with conversion APIs. So uh, what essentially conversion APIs do is they close loop conversations. Currently what is happening is you are telling Google, Hey, I need these kinds of customers and target ads to these kinds of customers, be it Google, beat Facebook, uh, and they will show these ads. But they are not getting to understand whether the ads that they have showcased has resulted in the end conversion that you were looking for. Now your end conversion might not be leads. You, you will be looking at an end conversion, maybe at a walk-in or even maybe at a booking. Now what is that end conversion and whether that has happened or no with the lead that has been generated is something that this conversion API will play a role in closed looping and informing you. Okay, what you were looking for has worked for an X category of customer and not worked with an Y category of customer. And that is where your play of first party data also becomes that much more important where it closed loop key. An X customer that you had acquired has helped and look for these kinds of people. Shubhami, thanks a ton. I believe uh, you got a gist. Remember, if you're putting any digital money out now, uh, make sure that you guys are leveraging Capi at list. So one question that I had regarding the same, uh, when these shifts are happening, Google Chrome, depreciating cookies, it's very important to work upon the first party data, as me mentioned, right? Uh, and I first party data in cinema hall, mein jo log ja na, unko bhi hu, agar hum usko capture kar rahe to, right? So uh, my question to you is, where all the first party data can be leveraged? A lot of technologies which are coming in the previous one, you had Propacity, you had uh, Reloy, uh, do, you know, talking about these solutions as well. And I wanted to know in terms of the community engagement, the customer engagement pieces, the broker engagement pieces, how efficiently do you believe that you are or you are believing that for the future, this technology pieces are going to be necessary. As he mentioned that, you know, he's building a community with regards to uh, a strata circle, right? And the same manner, what you believe is the future in this regards. Will there be a future where we'll see a Kanakia, an Oberoi, even a vibe for the brokers? Right, and the Kanakia for the customers and brokers both, same for Oberoi, will be having their own ecosystems where they are engaging with the customers who are currently already booked or they have ever given leads to you. So is there any movement that's happening? Is there any future that you see that is going to be a consistent phenomena all across? So Nidhi, I'll start with you on this one. So absolutely, I think that is the way forward. In fact, uh, we've already taken the first step in doing that. I think this is where you know, any of the advisory or services company come into play. I think that is exactly what we are trying to do. When we move from one project to another, we only move from one developer to another. The techniques, the kind of uh, leveraging factors which we do is all around the same concept. Say, for example, if you take about the channel partners, I think it's, it's not about uh, the activations anymore. It's about strategizing with them uh, in a very different fashion that they become the source of primary information for us, not only from the customer database, but also from a project perspective. So yes, we are building on that from a distribution perspective. The second perspective comes from a client base. So there definitely is a possibility where, when you're working with certain kind of uh, area, when you're working with certain kind of uh, you know geography, you tend to develop that expertise in getting 
the primary information. I think that primary information is what is a base for any of the advisory firm to further, <coughs> further go ahead and kind of do. And in fact, to be very relevant, I mean, we meet a lot of developers in a conversation and most of the developer these days are actually, I mean, surprisingly are not very interested in knowing that how we're going to kind of sell or what is going to be the target or what is going to be the pro process on closing. They're very interested in knowing from us as to what is the source of your primary data. Is, is it our money which is going to work for us or is it some other kind of a technique which you will deploy? And uh, I mean, with due respect to all the uh, companies here, I think typically there were just two sources in the past where, you know, the sales used to happen. One used to be the channel partners, one used to be the direct. But there were other concentrations where we understood the game is. It's not only, so how much would you probably go ahead and do a distribution channel? Or for that matter, how many uh, lead points you'll create to create hundreds of telecallers sitting and, you know, nurturing the data. I think we have reversed this entire situation where we are concentrating on a developer more from a direct angle. We are trying to create those direct points for us, in fact. Uh, uh, typically, I mean, the, uh, the typical nature of any of the services company is that when you, we, you have an advice, I mean, you have a distribution network, whereas we are creating more of the primary database. So I think, yes, this is a very, very, very important part for, for future and for all the companies going forward. Super. Vishal Bhai, what's your... So I already Take. touched that, you know, we, as I said, we, it, it's cross sectors uh, selling as well, you know, we're like first, first party data, what we mentioned. We really dig into what, what are the patterns uh, they follow, what, what, what sort of patterns a movie goer follow, or what sort of pattern a person who's staying in a hotel follows, or what set of uh, students, you know, we in fact give, uh, so there's a, there's a project in Mahindar and the school is right next door. So we said, uh, guaranteed admission for someone who, buys a home and and then I have thousands of leads coming in wherein I can actually cross sell my school also saying okay there is a school here uh, there is an education institution here and I mean if you are not even buying an apartment with me but no problem there is a you can still take an admission here so we definitely dwell into all the aspects of our business and then you know take uh, take help of generating AI or any other medium and uh, you know understand the pattern of the spending, understand the pattern of uh, the lifestyle and then, you know, promote the project. Super. So, uh, the point that I was mentioning before, right, uh, you have a school also leverage. Uh, we will help you leverage the cinema audience as well. So, that's some uh, different way of reaching out to the customers and that's what we need today. As Nidhi was saying, the, how much of distribution that you can really increase. Meet, what's your point uh, and take on this? So, Govind, I think uh, it's not going to be easy. To put it very simply, uh, the ROI that digital used to very easily justify earlier is going to get a little more tougher and you have to be very smart in uh, utilizing these assets uh, uh, going ahead. Uh, what I feel and I'll circle back to what I started with uh, is your, your storytelling on the brand becomes that much more important. Because people also are becoming very cognizant on how their data is being shared, you know. Uh, the way people used to share their leads very easily earlier, uh, I mean, they are very, and it's it, real estate as an industry is to be blamed for it, where one so lead, 50 call to spam ke hai hote. exactly. Yeah. So one lead will result into 100 calls and you can do the math on number of leads that you give. So people are also a little apprehensive in just giving out leads. They want to give out leads to only uh, advertisers that they are interested in. So you, uh, you'll have to put in a lot of uh, effort and a lot of uh, uh, sort of your resources aligned to the fact that you'll have to make people excited of what is it that is at offer and only then will the entire performance bit and the conversion APIs and all come into play. Super, yeah. That's, that's a very important point that you've spoken. Uh, the rest of our team, please reel bana lena jahan pe Meet ne bola. Uh, expensive hone wala hai, which is a true fact and the fact that he has given that you got to give in uh, incentives to the customers to give their leads to you and their information to you and uh, with that uh, Ankit what, what's your take? So I feel as as everyone mentioned right it's gonna get tougher with time right so uh, it is all gonna boil down to how you're building your brand right uh, the more the people will know about you the more the people will uh, connect to you is when things will come in. As as everyone mentioned that today one lead ends up becoming like a 50, 100 calls in a day. 
which are just spams uh right so uh, it is very critical how you now start creating your primary data uh, and i feel the only approach or the best way to do that is to build your brand and the community that you're building what what is the platform you're leveraging uh, could you just put a little bit more there that so there's a platform called as circle so and that's a technology developed by you that's uh, ip so no it it wasn't it was an existing uh, technology which we just put in as a, a plug it into our systems make it like a brand we pass on our data from our crm <coughs> and use that to have communications have have you know messages going around right because uh, again these are people who uh, who value the time most so as a brand we have we have a, we have a very clear this thing that uh, you know we don't send more than two emails in a week okay. or probably that frequency is as low as one as well right while i was just seated i got five emails from american express right so that's how the spammy you think works and once the people get irritated with it right once the people mark you into an spam piece it's very difficult to retrieve them back Absolutely. right so it's important that you know your users you know their mindset you know their mentality of how it functions and that use it in the right way right overdoing things is what is creating the bigger problems right now and uh, you know that is what is going to create it with all the other aspects that are going to come in from google and meta and everyone it's only going to create it more difficult for you to create that direct base but that's the base which will actually drive business let's be honest people are also moving to direct because that's where they actually make money yeah. right so uh, for us it has been a journey like that where we started we were at a 90 10 ratio where only 10% was direct and 90 was through the channel partner networks today we are at a 50 50 right so it is very critical that you know your audience you uh, you understand them and then you start leveraging them in the right way super vankit uh, with that guys uh, i'm just going to give you 15 seconds each because sapna and sripti are going to shoot me if i over extend i have already over extended <laughs> so uh, the rapid fire is about the last panel discuss about the future i'm going to discuss about the problem so one problem area that you are facing which you want the proptech entrepreneurs to solve for you in your ecosystems am i clear so uh, you know wherever that you want to partner with the proptech ecosystem a uh, guy who's offering a solution so we shall I'll, i'll start with you quickly you know i mean uh, real estate buying is very physical you know i yeah. mean if you i mean it's it's a look touch feel well a factor you know i mean uh, a wish list if you say uh, do do we have a project wherein there is no sales office yeah i mean if if you are talking about digital but as i said everything is happening in piecemeal you know so i probably there is an integrated platform who kinds of also take care of your pre sales for sales crm then your loyalty uh, your uh, uh, all the aspects of the, uh, it, starting from acquisition you know wherein ai generated digital ai generated generative ai generated data is available right from acquisition to the handover one seamless platform is where all the services are you know integrated is what something i feel it's missing here uh, we are doing everything कुछ पार्ट ले लिए हमने और कर दिया सो दैट्स अ सीमलेस यूनिफाइड प्लेटफॉर्म अंडरस्टूड भव्य प्लीज मीट हिम ही इज फ्रॉम माय टीम ओके दीदी व्हाट अबाउट यू सो आई विल कीप इट वेरी सिंपल क्वेश्चन टू अ क्वेश्चन व्हाई कांट यू क्रिएट अ ऐप व्हिच कैन बी डाउनलोडेड कैन यू कैन यू जस्ट कीप अ सीआरएम ऑन अ प्ले स्टोर एंड वी कैन जस्ट डाउनलोड एंड जस्ट स्टार्ट यूजिंग इट व्हाई इज दैट एन इंप्लीमेंटेशन रिक्वायर्ड Okay, that's that's something we got to think over. We all got to think over. Uh, Meet. What about you? I think the problem statement uh, which we will uh, collectively try to address is how can we change the nature of this entire uh, uh, relationship from being transactional to being more conversational. Oh, that's 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 beautiful actually. And one of the hunches that I really believe is conversation-led transactions can be a future or not. So yeah, point taken. Uh, any any prop tech entrepreneur in the room who wants to take this up, Ankit, what about you? At Strata, what's your issue that we can so solve? So I think for us the issue is a little different. Uh, for for us, it is more about education. It is more about awareness uh, because the uh, asset class that we deal with, right? Probably people over here are still reality experts. But you go out in the world and ask them, oh, what all do you think comes under CRE? Yeah. People will not come up more than an office or. A, you know a retail store or a mall right but cre includes anything that you are using for commercial let it be from a warehouse to an industry to a data center hospital hotels everything comes under cre right. so for us the bigger challenge or the 
not a challenge but a problem that we are trying to solve and we feel educating is the best way to do it uh, is to create awareness about the whole asset class itself. Shubham, so you largely need an education platform which can create awareness around the asset classes and maybe the influencers today that you know the ecosystem and the platforms to create a larger awareness there. So that's pretty much it guys. Thanks a ton for being so wonderful. And that's me, uh, official moderator of Reality Plus, signing off uh, uh, you know, today. Thanks a lot, everybody, for listening to us. We will catch up with you backstage if needed. Thank you. Thank you.